Our God is a God of wonders. His works are wonderful, greater than we can imagine. All the miracles and signs of scriptures are works of wonders, but let us look at some striking ones that still confound us to this day. Number one, the iron that floated. In water, heavy objects will naturally sink, but God is the creator and sustainer of all physical laws. God had blessed the Jericho school and it was necessary to expand their quarters. The students studied together when the prophet visited them because they met and sat before him to hear him teach. Elisha and the prophet's sons, who were training under him, realized that the house they were living in had become too small for them, so they decided to do something about it. Then they borrowed an axe and went to cut some logs to expand their living space. But then, something unique happened. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 through 7. The company of the prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan, where each of us can get a pole, and let us build a place there for us to meet. And he said, Go. Then one of them said, Will you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha replied, and he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh no, my lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. The man reached out his hand and took it. Their desire to be accompanied by the man of God emphasizes their desire to be men of God. The prophet's approach to dealing with overcrowding is instructive. They all contributed to the work that had to be done. Iron tools were not cheap, and the agony of losing such a valuable tool was aggravated by the fact that the axe had been borrowed. The prophets most likely did not have the money to pay for such a thing, which is why they had to borrow it in the first place. Elisha asked where the axe head had fallen and threw a stick into the water. The axe head floated to the water's surface, and the prophet who had lost it found it. Even in the most minor details of life, God demonstrated his power and care for those who follow him. Who would have guessed that throwing a stick into a river would result in a sunken axe head emerging from the water's surface? But remember that he is the God who can make the impossible possible. Number 2. Soldiers abandoned their horses while fleeing from a battlefield. In Kings, we see what happens when people forget God's actions and doubt what God says He will do. We also see a beautiful demonstration of God's gracious salvation of those who are outcasts and in desperate need. Elisha delivered a word from God during the Aramean siege of Samaria, Israel's capital city. Because of the famine and siege of Samaria, prices for typically inexpensive commodities skyrocketed. Although the king blamed God's prophet and the Lord himself for the calamity that was befalling Israel, Elisha predicted that within 24 hours, food sold at the city's gate would be available at bargain prices. When the king's high-ranking officer, who wielded great power over the king, heard Elisha's words, he laughed at Yahweh's ability to do such a thing. Elisha then told the officer that he would witness the event, but would not partake in it. Four lepers were pragmatists. They were outcast as lepers, which is why they were at the city gate's entrance. They realized that even if food was still available in the city, they would be the last to receive it. As a result, their best option was to surrender to the Arameans at their camp. The Arameans might spare them, but if they decide to slay or starve them, the outcome would be no worse than staying in the city. When the lepers arrived at the campsite, they discovered that the Arameans had abandoned it. When Yahweh caused them to hear the sounds of a vast army of horses and chariots approaching to attack them, the Arameans fled in terror. They made a hasty retreat, leaving everything behind. The Lord had scattered Israel's adversary, but Israel had no idea. The lepers moved from tent to tent, eating, drinking, and looting. The men realized what they were doing was wrong and that they needed to tell the city's starving people what they had discovered. The lepers returned to Samaria and reported their findings. They cared about people who probably cared little or nothing about them. Even though Israel's king was supposed to be Yahweh's instrument of blessing, 
God used these outcasts as heralds of good news. The king questioned the lepers and suspected an Aramean ruse. The king dispatched men to verify the lepers' report on the advice of one of his servants. When the soldiers heard the noise, the best decision would have been to mount their horses and flee, but the opposite occurred. A trained soldier fleeing a dangerous situation should mount his horse and run to gain time on the enemy pursuing him. This remarkable miracle shows that the hearts and thoughts of men can be under the influence of God, and each one follows according to his plans and purposes. Number 3. The Ever-Increasing Jug of Oil and Barrel of Flour Multiplication is the most significant way to achieve enlargement. Of course, additions are great, but multiplications bring leaps and increases. The Bible says, this was what happened with this particular miracle. There was a horrible famine in the land, so people were dying of hunger. But the Lord needed a place for His prophet to stay, and when He gives an assignment, He makes the provisions. We would generally expect the Lord to send His prophet to the home of a rich man, but He decided to send him to the home of a poor widow who had only a meal between her and death. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise! Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruse. And, behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she, and he, and her house, did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, Neither did the crews of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 through 16, King James Version. What a wonderful miracle to inspire, encourage, and strengthen us, especially when there's some lack. All his works are marvelous and a wonder to behold. The dawning of the day, the evening skies, the amazing beauty of his handiworks, the spacious firmament with the blue ethereal skies, the flowers and trees, the animals, domestic and wild, the brightly feathered birds, creeping and crawling insects, and most of all, man who is the crown of his creation. No matter the angle you view his works, you can only arrive at one conclusion. Wonderful! In fact, in the Messianic prophecy of Isaiah, one of the names of the coming king was stated as wonderful. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom, to order it, and to establish it with judgment, and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7, King James Version. God's love for wonderful works are seen in the miracles he works in the lives of his people. Moreover, his extreme desire and joy is to do these miracles, signs, and wonders for us. He lavishly works these miracles and wonders in our lives. For this reason, He deserves all our praises.
Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he is become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Thy right hand, O Lord, is becoming glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellency thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together. The floods stood upright as a heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. Thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them, they sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Exodus chapter 15 Quite often in the Bible, he would work these signs through the hands of his servants for the good of his people. This is how he backed up Moses by his power to do great signs in Egypt, breaking the 400 years of bondage his people were in. When the Lord, Jesus Christ, came into the world, he performed so many miracles and wonders that all of them couldn't even be recorded. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves already know. Acts chapter 2, verse 22, King James Version. His ministry was authenticated by the diverse miracles and wonders. The testimony was that he had done all things well, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Mark chapter 7, verse 37, King James Version. It is necessary to understand and appreciate the deaths involved in miracles fully. When we do this, we can place ourselves on the same paths so as to receive similar interventions. Miracles are real, and as darkness looms over the earth, it means the stage is set for more of God's wondrous miracles in the lives of His children to reveal His power and confound the foolishness of those who do not believe Him. We must allow God's power to show forth in our challenges because it is simply an opportunity. He is willing, He is able, and He is ever ready to help us. Let us pray. My mighty and powerful God, I thank you for who you are and all you do. Thank you for the awesome miracles you do in my life, and thank you for making me a beneficiary of these wondrous miracles through my faith in you. Please help me to never view any challenge before me as stronger, greater, or more powerful than the mighty power of your hands to intervene. I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Amen.